Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to an updated mod spotlight on Batania. Batania, as you guys probably know, is a mod that I really enjoy playing with. I think it's neat, it's different from one of the standard types of mods that you see. It's a magical-based mod that's, uh, you know, founded on flowers, but has a bunch of really cool mechanics that I think are a lot of fun to work with, automate, and build with. So it's just a cool mod overall, and it's uh, one that I've really enjoyed playing with lately. It's about time I did an updated mod spotlight on this, and Vasky actually told me that there's been over 100 version updates since the last time I did a spotlight on this mod. So I think it's about time. There has been a ton of stuff added because Vasky puts tons of time into this mod. So without further ado, let's take a look at all the new things that are in Batania. We're gonna wind up seeing this in kind of a randomish order because the list I got of all the new features was kind of given to me based on um, the versioning. So we'll, uh, we'll see a bunch of new things and a bunch of cool toys and all that neat stuff. All right guys, let's get started. So one of the first things I want to show you guys are some upgrades to some of the basic flowers you can find in the world. Uh, now this is again an update from the last Mod Spotlight, so this is one of the first things added since then. Uh, glimmering white flowers are basically uh, any flower, so you can use you know orange or purple or blue, whatever flower you want. Just add a couple pieces of glowstone and it will give off light. So you'll notice that it gives off light in a similar pattern to a torch. Now you can upgrade that if you want it to look a little bit fancier. Throw some dirt and some pasture seeds on there. Pasture seeds just being um, throwing some grass into uh, some mana and you'll get yourself a floating white flower so or any other color flower that you want so that's neat it looks cool and it floats there but then finally you can take this floating white flower and do something really cool with it and this is something that I thought was really neat you can upgrade that to be a functional flower so any of the flowers in the game that have a function that actually do stuff like the pure daisy um, or the day bloom for example you just take any one of those floating flowers that you've created combine it with the normal flower and you'll get the uh, floating functional form so if we got ourselves a floating day bloom here you'll notice that it'll sit there it'll float and it'll generate mana in much the same way that a normal day bloom would so if we made it daytime outside you'll notice that it will start generating mana and it can be dumped into things so a very cool and nifty little uh, functional effect as well as a pretty cool looking um, visual effect so one of the other changes that occurred since the last time we did this spotlight relates to mana pools. There are now two versions of the mana pool where there used to be just one. Uh, the simple and basic mana pool that's crafted with Living Rock is now called the diluted mana pool. It can only hold just a small amount of mana, so there's not much that it can handle. And it's also not able to craft most things. It's kind of like your first tier mana pool. But don't worry, it's very easy to upgrade to the regular mana pool. All you have to do is drop it into some mana. So I've got a nice little mana pool right here. Boom, got ourselves the top tier mana pool. This is the one that's gonna be responsible for doing most of your work. It's just something I want you guys to be aware of because uh, that might've caused some confusion. So briefly, I want to take a moment to take a look at the Lexica Batania, which has changed quite a bit since we last took a look at this. Uh, first off, there's now uh, buttons on the main menu here that give you all the different categories of things from the basics and mechanics down to the lexicon index. There's also an introductory video that you can take a look at and play with a little bit. Um, there's a whole bunch of information in here. So basically, if you're looking for any information uh, about the mod, the Lexica Batania is going to get you covered. Um, the other thing that's really neat is uh, the index section where you're able to search. You'll notice down the bottom it says type to search. So if we just start typing, you'll see it'll narrow down things. So if you want to find information about the mana pool, this little search button down here is where you're at. Um, you can also look at the history to see you know, what things were recently looked at in the book. Uh, you can add bookmarks to different tabs. So if you wanted to, you could add a bookmark here, and then you could always find that later by going to mana manipulation. So there's all kinds of nifty functionality within the books. Uh, there's also some options. So you can configure some in-game options, some of which may need to be, um, you know, close your client and relog in order for it to start working, but others not. Uh, there's also an achievement tabs here that you can see, kind of all the different Batania related achievements that are part of it. So really the Lexicon Batania is awesome. Uh, really gonna be where you're looking for pretty much anything you need to know. Uh, so the next item I wanna show you is actually one of the really cool items that are just fun to play with. Uh, and we're gonna go find it right here in the search bar. We're gonna look for the Shard of Laputa. Uh, this is a pretty nifty device. Um, 
what it's going to do is really cool and it's kind of hard to you know even indicate to you what it does there's several tiers of it it starts off at tier one and i think it goes all the way up to tier 20. and the main difference is that the higher tier shards are going to wind up um, having a larger area of effect so i believe uh, xx is the top and then it's bound to you know shard one and two and three so let's go use our shard of the pewter somewhere that it'll be pretty cool and out of the way so the most basic tier one shard will in effect an area the size of about, I think it's a radius of 14. So let's try using it right here. Dun, 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 dun. The shard of Laputa will take any terrain in the area and raise it up into the sky. How fun is that to watch? <laughs> Very cool. So you'll notice uh, this is going to take a few minutes depending on the size of the terrain that's being moved. Um, it typically works with most things. Um, you know, I've seen it work pretty well with tile entities and other mod blocks. You know, depending on the design of the mod, I wouldn't recommend taking a multi block structure and moving half of it up here. It'll probably move the blocks, but clearly it won't work too well after it's done being moved and you'll have to manipulate it a bit. But for the most part, things seem to work pretty well. And it's pretty fun to watch. So again, this is the smallest size and there are 20 tiers of this so you can get a pretty large uh, bit of terrain thrown up into the air another cool item that i want to show you is called the drum of the gathering now those of you familiar with my let's play series probably have seen this block before uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at getting a redstone mana spreader which most items that require a mana burst which we're going to see in a minute here you should be using a redstone mana spreader for and we're going to go ahead and place that guy there you're also going to want some kind of mana pool uh, to store your mana we'll just use a cheat mode mana pool what this drum does is pretty cool when it receives a mana burst courtesy of this here mana spreader Ta -da! it will automatically shear any nearby sheep. Uh, it'll also milk any nearby cows and place the milk in buckets, uh, provided there are buckets nearby. Um, one other thing to mention while we're on this topic is some changes to mana spreader functionality. For example, uh, if you wanted to hook this up to a couple different devices, for example, if we had another drum of the gathering here, or maybe a drum of the wild, for example, you can now use your Wand of the Forest to redirect things a little bit easier than you could in previous versions. Simply shift right click on nothing to change the wand to bind mode instead of function mode. Then shift right click on the mana spreader that you want to change. You'll notice that it has this uh, highlighted border around it and you can shift right click on the block that you want it to point at. It'll now be pointing at that new block. Very cool. Another fun little device is the tiny potato. Cool. The tiny potato is very just friendly little potato. Uh, you can right click on him and he'll do some fun little things for you. I definitely recommend checking him out and just seeing all the nifty things you can do. Hang on to him and he might even talk to you every now and then. And while we're on that topic, let's go ahead and demonstrate one of the features that has changed. You'll notice that when you mouse over a mana pool, uh, you can see what item you get from dropping an item into the mana pool. So for example, uh, we saw earlier, if we just drop some regular old grass into a mana pool, we can get uh, the seed there and the potato for the tiny potato. You'll also get a red X if there's not enough mana in the pool to do the process and a green check mark if there is. So pretty neat feature. So while I've got this contraption set up, let's demonstrate some other features uh, of the mana spreader and some of the new lenses that have been added since we last took a look at this mod. Uh, one, for example, is called the Kindle lens. This is a neat little lens. All it does, any mana burst uh, that hits a block will light that block on fire. So for example, if you had netherrack here, that would stay lit. Um, so it's basically a fire producing block. Pretty cool. The next lens to show you guys is the force lens. This one will act as a piston on whatever block it hits. So provided the block can be moved by a piston, it will do so. So this won't work on things like chests and other tile entities that regular pistons can't move, but it's still pretty neat. The flash mana lens is interesting. It works similar to the Kindle mana lens. However, you're gonna to wanna to use a dyed lens in order for this to occur. And what'll happen is, um, It'll go ahead and start this nifty little flashy, fiery effect here. And that fire effect is based on the color of the lens. So you'll notice that this is a cyan tinted lens. And for example, if I got some rose red dye here, uh, we might wind up with a different colored fire flame. When it 
hits it. Now, the second time it hits it, by the way, it will extinguish it. So if you want a new flame, you're going to want to do it twice there, and then boom. We've got a second bit of flame, a different color this time. Pretty neat. And finally, we've got the warp lens. What this does is it allows you to bind a force relay. Uh, I think you actually have to right click it with this guy to here. And what happens is the mana burst will teleport uh, from one location to the next when it goes ahead and travels through the force relay. So let's go ahead and remove that block now. And what we should see is the mana burst continues along its way from where that block was positioned when I did the binding. Pretty cool. You guys have seen me use this in my Let's Play series in combination with the bore lens, which we saw in our last mod spotlight will break any blocks that it encounters. We've used this to automate some things. So every now and then something pops up in a mod that I didn't even know existed. And here's one of them, the infrangible platform. Probably didn't know it existed because it's a creative only item and it's really designed to be used by map makers. Now what's cool about this is uh, A, you can't get it unless you're in creative mode or any I cheat mode. B, you can't break it unless you're in creative mode. So uh, it's really designed to be used by map makers. But what's cool about it is uh, you can make this infrangible platform look like any other block simply by right clicking on it with said block. Cool. So you'll notice that you can't break it in any way, um, and you can pretty much make it look like anything you want. Neat stuff. Um, and that's pretty much what it is. Very cool. All right, guys, here's a nifty little fun thing you can do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and combine the following items on an altar. And as we know, um, the altar is a cool place that we can do some crafting, right? So if we combine these items on a crafting, alter with the name tag. One other thing we're going to note here is that uh, when we go ahead and right click this, you'll get a progress bar. So this is another change that's been added since the last time we took a look at Batania. There's now actually a crafting progress bar when you hover over that and have the wand in your hand. The other thing that's kind of new is the Gaia Mana Spreader. I'll show you how to make these in a little bit, but this is the top tier Mana Spreader. There's actually three versions of Mana Spreaders now, each one of them, uh, you know, getting better uh, one version at a time. So while we're here, let's get some living rock, drop it on there, and right click. Cool, we just got Pahamar's head. This is the crafting process to go ahead and craft any player in the game's head. So uh, it uses their skin, so you'll notice that we just got Pahamar's head. Sorry, Pahamar, but you know, I needed to. I had to demonstrate. It's demonstration purposes, obviously. So any player, any game, any name, you can go ahead and uh, get their head courtesy of just using a name tag that is named with the player's name. How cool is that, huh? Right now, I'd like to take a look at some of the nifty gadgets that we can get from Batania. Uh, then we're going to get in some, some more mechanical stuff and then some other gadgets that are available. So there's a lot of cool things. One of them is the Ring of Far Reach. As you know, your player has about this kind of range to place a block, right? So we can place a block from this far away, but not really much further, right? So not much further than this. Yeah, that's about as far as we can go. However, if you go ahead and equip the Ring of Far Reach, you can go ahead and place blocks from much further away. Look at that, and mine as well. How cool, huh? So it looks like we now have a range of about this far. Not bad, I think that almost doubles the range that you can uh, you know, break and place blocks at. Awesome. That is the Ring of Far Reach. Another cool bobble is the Crimson Pendant. Uh, this is an upgraded version of the Pyroclast Pendant that we saw in the last spotlight, and it basically makes you almost completely and totally immune to all versions of fire and flame. So no problem taking a jump in lava, you've got yourself a Crimson Pendant. Hooray! Next on the list is the Hand of Ender. This is a neat, nifty gadget. It gives you access to your own personal player's vanilla Ender chest. So feel free to place some items in there, no problem, and then go ahead and right click to get them out. So that's your player's Ender chest, the one that's from vanilla Ender chest, and it's a very cool, nifty gadget to carry around with you. Do keep in mind that you're gonna need to use uh, some of the mana that's stored in a mana tablet. So make sure you have a mana tablet handy uh, storing some mana for you, cool? The next item I want to just talk about briefly, it's the Life Imbuer. Um, it's hard to show on camera, but what this does is uh, you go ahead and get yourself a regular vanilla spawner, so any kind of mob spawner that you want, and attach the Life Imbuer to it. So let's go ahead and do a mob spawner uh, with the mushrooms. Cool. We'll place this guy here, and you're also going to need to feed it uh, some other stuff, but what you do with this is once it's placed, I believe you put it on top, there you go, cool. Once that's there, uh, the mob spawner will be allowed to run 
even though there's no players nearby. So typically mob spawners from vanilla only work when there's players in the area with the life imbuer attached, no longer necessary. So on the topic of baubles, we've got the spectator. This is a really nifty gadget. Check this out. If you hold an item in your hand, like so, you'll notice that it's going to go ahead and cause any inventories nearby to glow if that item exists in them. So for example, if I'm holding the axe in my hand, the right chest glows, and if I'm holding cobblestone in my hand, the left chest glows. That's because there's cobblestone in the left chest and an axe in the right one. There's also gravel there, so holding gravel in your hand causes that to glow. Pretty neat, right? Very. And that works for anything with an inventory. Another nifty gadget is the vitreous pickaxe. This is a very basic and simple tool. It simply allows you to break glass with the tool without having to have silk touch on it to get it back. As we know, breaking a glass with normal tools causes it to be destroyed. So the vitreous pickaxe, definitely a useful device for those of you in the early game that don't have silk touch, but still want to be able to break and replace glass. Another cool little toy is the starfield generator. What this does is cause some pretty cool looking stars to be generated up in the sky. Ooh, fancy. Nice thing to have up above your house, just very cool looking. Go ahead and break it and the stars will eventually fade out. As you guys recall, the Rod of the Lands allows you to place dirt anywhere you want in the world for the simple cost of a bit of mana from your mana tablet. The Rod of the Highlands allows you to place that dirt in mid-air. It doesn't have to be placed on a regular block like the Rod of the Lands does force you to do. You guys remember the Drum of the Wild, or the Horn of the Wild, or the Drum of the Wild. That will automatically clear away any grass and, you know, seeds, plants, all that good stuff. Well, another new one has been added, the Horn of the Canopy. This one clears away any and all leaves for you. Awesome. So here's a nifty gadget called the Rod of the Plentiful Mantle. It's relatively cheap for what it does, but it does use some mana from your mana tablet, so keep that in mind. Simply right click, and it'll be able to divine for you any nearby ore deposits. So if we start looking around, we can probably find some ore relatively close. There it is, nice. Now each color uh, will represent a different kind of ore, um, so keep that in mind. You may not necessarily get the same colors every time, but it will tell you where all the different ores are near to your location. Very neat. All right, guys, let's take a look at a couple other nifty gadgets. This one is a lot of fun. Rod of the Shaded Mesa? Hmm, I wonder if that's a reference to. Well, if you hold right click while facing an entity, you can pick them up and throw them around. Cool. Look at that, lots of fun. And then left click will toss them away. See you later, spider. Uh, another nifty gadget here to take a look at is Rod of the Unstable Reservoir. Simply hold right click and anything nearby will get pelted with large amounts of damage. Um, do keep in mind that both of these use mana tablets for their power source, so make sure to have them handy. Uh, you'll also notice that there's no enemies nearby. It won't look like it's doing anything, so do make sure you've got something That'll get hit. Nice. There are many forms of the Flugel Tiara. Uh, let's see here. So you can see there's a bunch of different ones. I'll demonstrate a few. They all do the same thing. They allow you to fly. But they also give you this nifty little wings animation. Cool. So each one has its own version of this. Um, if we go ahead and uh, you know swap this out, you'll see different wings. Uh, I've only got a few here ready to show you, but they're all pretty neat looking. And of course, there's a, a blank one as well, if you just don't want to have any uh, visual wings available but still have the flight ability. So if you were to be wearing uh, the blank one, it'll look like that. Neato. You'll also notice, by the way, that my mana tablet renders on my player in the belt slot. Cool. Now there's two types of ivy that are available here, Resolute and Timeless Ivy. These are both very nifty gadgets. Uh, as you may remember from my previous spotlight, there are Mana Steel tools available and Terra Steel tools available that will repair themselves using a mana tablet. Well, if you were to attach some Timeless Ivy to any item and give it three of those items that would normally be used to repair it in an anvil, so you do need all three, this will use the Timeless Ivy to uh, allow items to be repaired in your toolbar, provided that you have some mana in your mana tablet nearby. Pretty cool, right? 
Uh, the other nifty thing you can do is attach yourself some Resolute Ivy. This is a very cool thing. Uh, Resolute Ivy, when your player dies, whatever items currently have Resolute Ivy attached to them will remain in the player's inventory on death. However, it will use up the Resolute Ivy, so you're going to need to reattach Resolute Ivy every time you die to whatever items you have, otherwise you'll wind up um, you know, losing it the next time you die. I personally almost never have enough mana laying around, however if you have an overabundance but you're really low on RF, you can go ahead and craft yourself a mana flux field, which is a pretty nifty device. It will automatically convert any mana bursts that hit it into RF. Cool. So funny thing, this mod is about flowers, and we haven't seen any flowers yet. So let's change this. Uh, I've got a handful of new flowers with new mechanics that I'd like to show you. Uh, the first one is the Gormaleus. Uh, this is a flower that eats food and converts the uh, food's power into mana. So by just dropping a piece of food here, you'll notice that the Gormaleus is starting to generate mana. Now, similar to the way the coal flower works, you're not able to um, very quickly... Uh, drop a bunch of food down. It can only eat one piece of food at a time, and then when it's finished converting that food into mana, which it looks like it is, you can then go ahead and drop another one. Cool. And it'll go ahead and produce more mana for you, and, uh, you know, manage to send it via any nearby mana spreaders into the mana pool. On this topic, one of the new features and abilities with Batania is the uh, option to change which mana spreader your flowers go to. In the past, they would bind to the nearest mana spreader that was down when you place down the flower. Uh, however, for now, if you'd like to bind it to a different mana spreader, so for example, we wanted to bind this guy over here, in much the same way that you can bind mana spreaders to mana pools and other devices, you can simply shift right click on a flower and then shift right click on a mana spreader and that little uh, beam of uh, colored particles there indicates that they are now bound. You'll also notice that when you uh, hold your wand of the for forest over a flower you'll see that there's a nice little um, border around whatever mana spreader it's linked to. Cool? Ah, the Vinculatus. This is a flower near and dear to my heart. Mostly because it harasses Enderman. Sneaky Enderman. Come here, I'm gonna hit you. Oh no, it's daytime, you're gonna teleport away. Not if I have anything to say about it. The Vinculatus forces any Enderman activating their teleporting ability, instead of teleporting to where they want to teleport to, will instead be teleported to the Vinculatus. And only to the Vinculatus. Unless, of course, I hit it with a sword and knock it off. But, you get the point. So the Vinculatus forces Enderman to teleport to it, for the small cost of some mana from a nearby mana pool. So you can see, once again, the Enderman, while teleporting, will definitely have to teleport like so. Cool. The Spectranthemum is a pretty neat block. Simply shift right click to bind it to any other block in the world. And any items or entities or anything nearby that gets dropped on it will automatically be teleported to that location. Cool. So you can pretty much teleport. I think most things, as long as they don't contain mana, uh, will be able to be teleported over there. How neat is that? The Merimorphosis is a pretty neat stone. Uh, it's going to go ahead and convert nearby stone blocks into different types of metamorphic stones. Pretty cool. Uh, there's eight different types in total that you can get, and they're most, mostly just used uh, for the purposes of decorative block type stuff. But it's a pretty neat process. So uh, like I said, there's a total of eight different types, and you can check out all eight of them by downloading the mod and checking it out for yourself. So the next flower to show you guys is the Spectralust. This is a flower that generates mana by tossing certain colors of wool on it. So I just tossed a piece of white wool on there, and you'll notice that it's happily uh, creating mana and the elven mana spreader is filling up. At this point though, it wants orange wool. So you have to drop the wool types in order. There we go, just did a mana burst. If you don't, well, it's gonna go ahead and eat the wool, but it's not gonna be particularly happy and it's not going to do a very good job. So it's basically going to eat the wool, but not actually produce any mana for it. So don't just drop, you know, whatever wool you want nearby, drop these in the correct order. So lime and then pink and then gray, etc. down the line all the way till you get to black and then loop back to white. So here's a pretty nifty uh, flower to show you guys, the bubble flower. Uh, this one, when you place it on the ground here like so, will slowly spread out and protect the area from water. You'll see it just cleared away a bunch of water for us. Very cool. Uh, block radius, it looks like about 12. Uh, it does need a steady supply of mana though, so do keep that in mind. 
So anyone who's built any bit of automation with anything while they were wearing the Ring of Magnetization is probably aware of the fact that the Ring of Magnetization tends to suck items up. So if you have a wool farm going on, if you have um, something from Applied Energistics going on that's dropping items, if you have all these different items around and you just would prefer that your magnet not function in a specific area, then you're going to want the Solingolia. This is a cool flower. Uh, when you place it down, any items dropped will no longer be sucked in courtesy of your magnet. So the magnet will continue to work outside the range of the Solingolia, but as long as this thing is planted nearby and is supplied with just a little bit of mana, it'll nullify the effects of your ring of magnetization. Ta-da! But of course, like I said, outside the range, no problem, the magnet still works. Cool. Of course, getting rid of the flower, the magnet starts working again. I'm just going to mention what the Nar Slimus does. Um, if you have found a slime generating chunk, any slimes that generate courtesy of world spawn uh, will get intercepted by the Nar Slimus and converted directly into mana. Uh, however, this will not work if you spawn it in with like a mob spawner or some kind of spawn egg or something like that. So I can't really demonstrate it to you. Um, but pretty much if you get a slime spawning chunk, the Nar Slimus should work for you. So here's an interesting flower, the Metamone. Uh, this flower will simply halt in their tracks any entities nearby. That's right, guys. You're not going anywhere. Uh, it should also work with skeletons and pretty much almost any entity, uh, preventing them from moving. Of course, uh, they'll probably still be able to shoot you with arrows, so keep that in mind. Next up, let's talk about Red String. This is a pretty neat mechanic that I want to show you guys a couple different variations of. So Red String can be used to craft a handful of different things. Let's take a look at the first and most basic version, the Red String Container. So you'll notice here that one side of this Red String block has this little red spot coming out of it. What this does is allow this to bind to any inventory in the very first inventory that it sees. And if you hold your wand of the forest, you'll actually see this Red String connection occurring. Pretty cool. What this has now done is bound the red string container blocks inventory sidedness to the chest that it's hitting. Now this does have a maximum range, but it does not get interrupted by blocks in the middle of the way. So you'll see that the connection still occurs. What we can do now is pipe items into this red string container. For example, if we were to put cobblestone in there, any items would automatically be transported across the red string connection into that chest. Cool. Do note, like I said, it's always the first connection in the line, so if it runs into another chest in the way, it's going to hit that one first. Pretty neat. Now a similar construct to this is the red string dispenser. This can bind up with dispensers or droppers, and when a redstone signal is applied to it, it will transfer that redstone signal as well as the inventory over. So for example, if we place some arrows into the hopper, they're gonna be dropped in the dispenser here, and if we go ahead and apply a redstone signal to the red string dispenser, you'll notice it's shooting the arrows for us. Nice. The red stringed neutrifier will pass along the effects of any bone meal applied. This block is the red string comparator, and what it does is it allows the comparator signal that would be emitted from the bound block to be transmitted to it. So for example, as we know, as we put chests, uh, items into chests, uh, comparators attached to that chest would normally output a redstone signal based on the number of items in there. Now that information is passed along the red string to the red string comparator so that you can measure uh, the uh, in items in the chest or pretty much anything that a comparator would output. So you can hook this up to a mana pool, for example, and uh, measure the amount of mana currently in the mana pool, that kind of thing. And lastly, we have the red stringed spoofer. You'll notice that you can place any Batania based functional or mana generating flower on top of the red stringed spoofer. So any flower from Batania can place there and its effects will be transferred to any flower found in its path. For example, I'm targeting a vanilla dandelion. So this regular old dandelion, part of vanilla Minecraft in no way special or unique, is receiving the effects of the pure daisy. And the vanilla dandelion will then convert all the nearby blocks to living rock. Pretty cool. Uh, it should also be noted, by the way, that this also works uh, with mushrooms, not just flowers. And as you can see, the regular old dandelion here just converted all the blocks to living rock because the pure daisy is transmitting its effects to that flower. All right, guys, and then one more thing I want to show you is an integration with Thumbcraft. 
So for example, if we had ourselves some goggles of revealing and we combined those with any of the helmets from uh, Batania here, be it Mana Steel, Terra Steel, um, or Elementium, we would get that version's uh, helmet of revealing. And we can use these that act just like goggles of revealing, but still have all the benefits of the Terra Steel or Mana Steel or Elementium helms. So the same armor comparison and all that good stuff, but it just functions like goggles of revealing. So for example, you can see all the things like uh, aura nodes that you wouldn't otherwise be able to see unless you had goggles of revealing on. Cool. So we can see an aura node just fine, courtesy of the Terra Steel helmet of revealing or the Elementium helmet of revealing. Nice. The other thing that works with this uh, is the inkwell. You get this nifty um, botanergus inkwell, which is as easy as dropping some scribing tools into a mana infusion via mana pool, and you get the botanergus inkwell. Uh, what you can do with this is instead of having to refill the ink with um, ink from squids, you can just drop it into an inkwell and it'll automatically um, fill up courtesy of the mana in the inkwell. Uh, make sure that the mana pool is set to spare mana to items and then drop your item in and it should have no problem filling it up. And you'll notice that it is now full. Nice. So I have a lot more things to do. I think maybe half of my list of things to cover has been covered, but not even possibly. It might be less than half. So I'm going to wrap up episode one of the Patania Mod Spotlight update here. Next episode, we're going to come back. We're going to take a look at some other mechanics like the Crafty Crate, Corporea. Uh, we're going to take a look at some things like... Uh, probably some buildcraft integration, the rituals of Gaia, brewing system, which is new. Uh, we've got a bunch more toys and gadgets to play with that we haven't even seen, I think, half of. So uh, there's things like the Mana Seer Monocle, a bunch of baubles that are available, the Assembly Halo, Mana Prism, uh, the Chakram, a couple different rods. There's literally probably more to cover than I've thus far covered in this Mod Spotlight update. So this may wind up being a three-part mod update spotlight which sounds crazy to me because i don't think i've ever done a three-part update i mean usually it's like hey the mod's completely changed and we need to do a three-parter but i don't think i've ever done three parts on just a regular old here's the new things in the mod so like i said a lot of stuff to cover for batania for now this is direwell 20 signing off hope you guys enjoyed mod spotlight part one of batania we'll be back next time to check out a bunch more cool stuff all right guys take it easy